Hello everyone. So I got my very first sketch box ever. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what's in here as well as test out some of the supplies. I have already opened it <laughs> and I've already used the main item, but that's because when I saw what it was, I realized it would just be too messy and time consuming to do all on camera with you. I will use it on a smaller scale just to show you how it works, but um, I'll mostly be showing you the results I got when I used it earlier. But first, let's look at what's in the box. This is for March, so this showed up yesterday, which was March 1st. I'm gonna take it away. I'm using this so that I don't get my mom's desk uh, messy when we test out one of the messy supplies, but. First thing we got is this um, Montval or Montwall, I can't tell if that's V or U, um, watercolor block from Canson. This, according to the um, little information, information sheet, is acid-free, and it is a four by six block with 15 sheets, and they're 300 grams or 140 pounds. Uh, we got this little paint tray. Honestly, I'll probably never use this. I'll keep it if I ever know I'm going to be using some messy acrylic paints and don't want to use my porcelain ones. But um, so useful to have as backups, but I don't really use these plastic ones. We got this Sketchbox Signature Angle Chisel 3 8 brush. Make sure you can see it. Yeah. Um, I will say this isn't the brush I would choose to use with the supplies, but let me finish showing you the supplies before I talk about why. We got a Copic multi-liner in brown, uh, 0.1 size. I love Copics. Again, I wouldn't have chosen brown, <laughs> but that's just me. I'm, I'm not... I don't know, I don't think I would ever be like, oh, let me line this artwork in brown. <laughs> I, it, I'll keep it and maybe at some point I'll be like, hey, this will actually be useful. But personally, I would have preferred black or literally any other color but brown. I don't know why they gave us a brown one. Um, but yeah, I mean, Copics are always nice to have. And then the main star of the show are these color pigments. And these are powders that you mix your own watercolors with. Um, we have a red, a blue, a yellow, which you can see I basically used all of. There's only a little left. And I think this is what the premium users get that the basic box doesn't have, and that's a silver metallic. Now, this was the only thing in the box, the silver metallic, that I really just wish we didn't get. I would have loved if we got a white or a black or both instead of this metallic. I think metallic watercolors are kind of tacky looking. I think it's more things something like kids like. They're kind of gimmicky and... I don't know, I'm literally never going to use this metallic, but I would have killed for a white or a black so that I could change the just tone and luminosity of my paints that I made because I don't like very vivid paints personally. Um, so I'm never gonna use this metallic, unfortunately. And then those came with this little tool. So it's got the scooper for the powders. And then I used this end to mix the paints, which are made with this gum Arabic as the binder. This is Sketchbox Signature Gum Arabic. And I still have about half the bottle left. So what I did, because I said I used these already, is I made my own paints already. I will make one on camera right now for you guys. Um, Again, that's why I have this down, because it was a very messy process. But first, let me show you, first I'll show you the sticker, and then I'll show you the paints I made already. But here's the little sticker. It's just got the 
powdered pigments on there. The paints I made already, I have in my, one of my watercolor tins. It was all of these. And they're right here. This one I still have, um, you can see spots of the blue pigment because I guess I didn't blend it well enough and obviously this didn't come with the glass, um, sheet of sanded glass with the glass muller to like really blend down the powders. So it is a little speckled, but I think it kind of made a cool effect with my swatches. And here are the swatches. So these are all of those colors I just showed you. These are all the ones I made. And I was really happy, especially with like this green, for example. I don't know if it's showing up, but you can see like the blue separated a bit from the green. And you can see some green separating in this blue here because I mixed multiple pigments together. And I love that. I love that separation. I love the granulation I got in this. Really just all the granulation in ones where I had multiple colors. This one's weird. This one looks brown in here, and I had put the metallic in there because I was like, oh, I'm going to do like a metallic bronze, almost like a copper penny, um, and it even looks brown there, and then this was the swatch, and also the metallic didn't really show up, which I'm happy about because I don't like metallics, like I said, I did it, oops, I did it for the sake of science, but um, yeah. For some reason, when I actually put it on paper, it turns out orange instead of the brown. And the metallic doesn't show up. But, uh, it is what it is. When it comes to the brush, what I was saying is that I wouldn't use it for watercolors. It doesn't feel capable of carrying much water at all, honestly. It would be good for, like, very fine details, I give you that, but that's not really what I do with watercolor. Um... I would totally use it with other types of paint. It's not a bad paintbrush at all. Like I'm not dissing the paintbrush. Oh no. It's just, I wouldn't use it with watercolors, but I'll definitely keep it and use it for my other types of paint that I use. But let's see if I can get this off because I didn't bring a knife or anything in here. Also, this is the first watercolor block where, that I've had, I mean, where it separates at the corner instead of like having the gap right there. But let me see if I can remove this with my fingers without ruining it. Okay, I did. Nice. So yeah, I do have a bit of a cold, so if I sniffle a lot, I apologize. Also, this is a cold press, so it's got a texture. I'm a hot press type of gal, but I will absolutely still use it. And when we mix our paint and then test it out, I will be using my Squirrel Hair Dugato um, paintbrush because it actually holds water well. Um, so I, I'm sorry if it annoys you that I don't actually show off using this brush, but we all know how paintbrushes work. You don't really need me to test that one out, I don't think. It's more about uh, testing out, I think, the paint making kit that we got. And you will see how messy it is. Like I said, I basically don't have yellow left. There's just a minuscule amount and the other ones overpower the yellow so much that that wouldn't actually do anything putting it in them so we're just gonna be making like a purple with the blue and the red and I'm gonna be using one of my empty full pans that I have in here Now they gave you this, like I watched the video for this and everything, they gave you this with the intention of you just mixing and leaving the paints in here to dry and using this as your paint palette um, that you leave the paints in. But since I actually want to be using the paints in the future and I want them to stay safe and fully like covered up and on hand, I did them in my own pans. And then obviously, as you saw, I put it in my palette. So we're going to be doing that. I'm probably just going to do like an even amount of both of these. Since I'm not going for a set color, I think it's probably just going to end up, this is why I said it's messy, it gets everywhere, but I think it's probably just going to end up like this again, because that's sort of what I did with that color, but we'll see what we get. And I am putting a lot in here, because one, I want the pan mostly filled, 
But on top of that, I like very opaque watercolors. And that means having a lot of pigment in there and not as much of the binder so that it's very pigment heavy when you lay it down. And for the record, I've never made my own paints before. So this is not coming from knowledge. <laughs> this is just coming from me, um, from what I've looked into and then me testing things out. So definitely don't just follow whatever I say or do. I am a first time paint maker using this box. That being said, I've always wanted to make my own paint. So this was not like out of left field for me when I saw this. I was so excited and I'm happy to say that even though I got what I consider very general colors because we only have the primaries and no whites or blacks or anything, even though these are very basic colors, I feel oddly proud of them and like proud to use them because even though it's literally just me mixing powder and a liquid, I'm like, yeah, I made that myself. Like these paints I made by hand myself. So like, I just feel more proud like using them and like looking at them, even if they're just like super basic. So I'm really happy with this month's box. I should have said that earlier. I, like I said, have wanted to try making my own paint for a couple years now. And I just didn't want to invest the money yet when I was like, oh, what if I hate it or I don't know, like, you know what I mean? It's an investment because I want the glass molar tool and like the sort of sanded glass that you grind it between. And I want like high end pigments and everything. And they're all very expensive. Like I specifically want those pigment sets from Choosing Keeping. And they're like 110 pounds, which I don't even know what that is in American dollars, but um, it all be very expensive. And after trying this, I absolutely think it'll be worth it. And I actually want to invest in them. So if and when I do that, I will definitely show you more homemade paints and everything on this channel. But this box was sort of, it was crazy that it was my first box ever for Sketchbox. And I was really worried it was gonna be something I would never use or I wouldn't want. And it ended up being something that I have wanted to try for years. And that's just crazy to me like that. The fact that that's what it ended up being was like creepy fate. I was just like, yes, thank you. Like, that's great. Um, I don't know if you could really tell, but I did leave this very thick. And that's what I meant by like a small amount of binder, which I hope doesn't mess anything up. I mean, I didn't notice anything when I was using mine, but I did a small amount of binder and a large amount of pigment to try to get it more opaque. I'm trying to see, this is very like mulberry wine color, which is actually good because I don't really have that here. Unless when we use it with water, it might turn more into that, but yeah, I like it. So that's how you use this, or that's how I used this, and that's basically what the video showed. They just did it in this. Um, but let's go ahead and swatch that paint. And just like any other watercolor, when you leave these in a pan, the water in the binding agent evaporates and they will harden and then you can reuse them. So it's totally the same as a store-bought one, for example, which I also have in here. These are Schmincke mostly and everything. And actually, I think they're all Schmincke. And you can see they're hard now that they've been left in here. And these will do the same thing. And then you can just re-wet them and use them. They're, they are drying very slowly. I did this earlier, like hours ago. <laughs> I did this at like 5 a.m. And I think it's like 11.30 now. And they do still um, sag slowly to one side. So it does take a long time for them to dry which is fine. That's not a complaint, by the way. That's just in case you were curious. Um, but yeah, let's try this out. You can see I got powder everywhere, which is why I was trying to be careful. I'll just doodle something and then we can, I'll swatch it here and then I will fill in my doodle with this paint or maybe with the green or something. Um, but I will swatch this right now. I guess, okay, I'll swatch it with this and then I'll also swatch it with my squirrel hair brush. But we'll do that just so we can test this out. I'm not used to using watercolors that are still wet. I'm used to using dry watercolors. So 
We'll see how this goes. I also, yeah, see, like, there's no water in this brush. Like, oh, that's a beautiful color, though. Isn't that gorgeous? You'll see what I mean, though. Well, I don't know if you can see what I mean. Because I don't have the grinding tools, the blue pigment is just, like, flecked in there. And you have to, like, brush it out and blend it together as you go because it wasn't like ground together or anything. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I'm really happy with that. Now let me clean this brush and... I guess I don't need to swatch it with my squirrel hair one. That was an okay swatch. Let's get our brown Copic. <laughs> And I don't know why, but so does anyone else remember that when you had Tamagotchi pets, they were kind of just like weird looking blob creatures. They weren't really, I don't know how to explain it. They were silly looking. There was even like keychains of them you could get. I don't know why I have it in my head to do one of those just sort of like weird blob creatures loosely based on an animal and color that in, but that's what we're going to do. I'm going to see, you can also see how fine tipped this is, by the way but I'm gonna see if I can doodle a sort of blobby creature alligator thing and we will color him in. So we've got the little eye at the top. Also, it says it's brown, but it's a very red brown in my opinion, which is kind of nice. We're gonna give him like, like they all had mouths like that. Like they were just long, weird mouth situations. They weren't mouths, they were mouth situations. That's what we're calling it. I'm gonna say he's got weird little arms. Um, that was not the right shape, but there, this is our weird little guy. And then like, I'll, I guess, Doodle the little eye right there. That was an accidental line right here, by the way. We're just gonna paint over that. Here's our little gator blob creature. We are going to wait a second for this to fully dry because they are waterproof, but you gotta give them a second. And then I will fill him in. I might fill him in. I should use this color, but this is like one of my favorites that I mixed. These two are my favorites, but I guess I should use this one. I'll use this one. Um, let's see. I will put this guy in here. Actually, I'm not gonna move them while it's all wet. I'll probably drop something. All right, let's hope that pen is dried enough. Let me... I think it is. My brain like doesn't function while I'm drawing, so <laughs> that's why I keep going quiet. I'm concentrating. Did you know that studies show your communication skills are like halved or something while you're creating art, like when you're being artistic. Fun fact, that's why there are never any videos of me actively drawing. I literally like can't, like I can't, I, can, I mean I can draw on camera but I can't talk while I do it. And I'm not crazy about videos where it's no speaking and it's just music and stuff. Um. So yeah, that's why I never make videos like that. I'm trying to mix it a bit because this is the one where the pigment kind of separated just because I don't have the tools to grind it. See those flecks? I don't know if the camera can pick it up that far away, but those are the blue that I put in to make the green. So you kind of got to give it a stir while you paint to get those out. 
But that's the only one I noticed doing that. Like my other colors didn't do that. So I think it was just that one specifically. I didn't blend well enough or something. Or like maybe I got a chunk of blue pigment that kind of stuck together and then broke apart into tiny bits and stayed like that. Sorry, this is the weirdest thing. Like of all the things for me to finally do on camera while you watch, like weird Tamagotchi alligator creature wasn't uh, what I thought it was gonna be. But I'm mostly just showing you how the stuff works. So yeah, this one has those little specks of the blue but when you like sort of stir it while you use it, they mostly dissolve. I think it's kind of a cool effect though. Um, let me put a little of the dark green in there too. Like I said, I love how the dark green turned out. I should have used a smaller brush for this, but this was my smallest of my squirrel hair ones, and those are my favorite brushes. All right, I have way too much water there, but oh well. Now, once that fella dries, it would be fun to do some details with, like, colored pencil on top of it and spruce him up a little. But for now, that's him. Um, hopefully you could see all of that well. I didn't have the camera in my view while I worked. But yeah, that was March's box. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you got it, tell me what you thought and if you've used it yet or if you're excited to use it. And if it's anything you sort of like wanted to do or if it was just completely out of left field for you. <laughs> but that's all. I will see you guys again soon, especially because I am getting next month also. So I'll at least see you in a month. Hopefully I'll see you sooner than that though. So bye.